Time to shine today, Podcast Varsity Squad. This is Scott Ferguson. And you guys hear me reference my friend here, MJ DeMarco, in a lot of my Knowledge Nugget podcast, stuff that I pick up from his books, The Millionaire Fast Lane, Unscripted, and the newer one, Rat Race. Um, and it's some one thing about my friend MJ here is that he actually gives you steps to, and he calls it a framework, to actually apply. Um, and if you look at the end of the book, Unscripted, which I've talked about, and what you can actually do with 10 large, with $10,000, and how to make it work, it works. And I did a whole podcast that I dropped a while ago on how that actually works. Not only does he optimize your wealth, but he talks about your health as well. I mean, I'm, if you're watching on here on YouTube or Vimeo or anywhere, I got, he got me into these things called STIR. Instead of getting away from the Mayos and stuff like that and the, the stuff that was hurting my body, the guy knows his stuff internally, externally. And MJ DeMarco is an entrepreneur, an international best-selling author of The Millionaire Fastlane, Unscripted, and The Great Rat Race Escape. He's the founder of Viperion Publishing Corp and the Fastlane Forum, which at, uh, that, the Fastlane Forum, which I'm a member of, I'm kind of like a voyeur. I don't really get too involved in it, but I pick up so many knowledge nuggets out of this, the, the forum, that it'll be in the show notes. Don't go there now. Uh, you want to listen to the end because I do have a book giveaway for all three of his books uh, that'll come towards the end. So you have to listen through, okay? He's, the forum has over 70,000 users and nearly a million posts. And by now, it may be over a million posts. So MJ, thank you so much for coming on. Please introduce yourself to Time to Shine Today Podcast Varsity Squad. But first, what's your favorite color and why? Black. Black. Why is that, buddy? Uh, I, I think it's a, it's a symbol of, uh, control and power. <laughs> yes. You know what you have that, but you have this, like the way I read your book, sometimes I would get pissed. I'd be like, man, he's so gruff. He's so mean, but you're being real. It was like, you, you're, you and I are very close in age and we were raised by it's real. There's no, there was no freaking apps or anything like that. It was yeah. real. And that's how I start picking up the knowledge nuggets from the book. So I think black fits you, fits you absolutely perfectly. So do, do you mind sharing a little, a little bit about your base story as we move forward and then we'll get to a little bit more meats and potatoes? Sure, I'll try to be as quick as possible on right. that. Um, when I was a teenager, I grew up in a, a, a lower middle-class family and I hated the existence, you know, worrying about where food was going to come on the table. And uh, I just hated the existence. And I remember seeing a, uh, a Lamborghini Countach uh, at an ice cream store. Um, I think I was 12, 13 years old and a young guy was driving the car and I figured, okay, well, this is an athlete. You know, this is some type of celebrity or something. Right. And I actually uh, stepped out of my comfort zone and asked the guy what he did for a living at which time he told me he was an entrepreneur. So that's, that planted a seed for me that said, Hey, you know what? I can be an entrepreneur. Um, and, really, I guess, you know, for lack of a better phrase, get rich quick, because right. this guy was young. And, you know, and at that time, uh, you know, I was all about, you know, all about the cars. Uh, <laughs> so that planted the seed for me really early. Um, unfortunately, it took me almost, uh, I would say 10 years, uh, more than that, probably I, I, my identity as an entrepreneur, uh, really only started to match when I was in my mid 20s done, you know, failed at a lot of stuff, just the tons of just stupid businesses, got involved in a bunch of schemes and whatnot. I ended up starting a company, an internet company, uh, founded it on my own with no capital, no expertise, self-taught myself, everything, sold that at the height of the dot-com boom, got it back um, when the company that purchased it ended up going bankrupt, bought, bought it back, ran it for another four or five years, uh, sold it again for another multi-million dollar valuation. And at that point, that was, um, I believe, 2007, I said, hey, you know what? I never have to work again another day in my life. This is fantastic. But what do I want to do now? And it was always my passion to want to write. And uh, that's when I started writing The Millionaire Fast Lane uh, to show people that there's this alternative way to um, generate wealth and actually live a life that is worth living, live your dream, live your purpose, live your passion, while not 
having to worry about money. So that's what I do now is I own a publishing company that allows me uh, to write what I want, when I want, without any control, any editorial influence, no publishers breathing down my neck. Uh, so that's essentially the millionaire fast lane is the framework that allows people to start businesses that can change their lives in 10 years or less. And by changing your life in 10 years or less, I mean making millions and millions of dollars to the point you never have to work again. And to the point you can say, you know what, hey, I can afford to follow my passion now, even though that passion might not be able to, you know, normally under normal circumstances, pay bills. Like, as I wouldn't have started a publishing company if I was broke, it was it would simply not be the right business to start, but I can do it now because I can afford it. So that's what the Millionaire Fast Lane is, this framework, how to use leverage entrepreneurship to create asymmetrical returns, which is you, uh, I started my company with $900 and I made over $10 million with that company. $900 oh, to turn into $10 million. Well, I can tell you the stock market's not going to do that. No, sir. You're right. So that is the essence of my framework and uh, which is covered in all my books. I love it because, you know, I come from like a same thing. Dad worked on the line at General Motors, you know, mm -hmm. went in the military, get out, didn't have that identity and that mindset. Right. So I, I know you told the story about driving limos, I believe, and like driving these rich people around and feeling it. What was that switch, brother, that was like, shit, I could do this? Um, well, it was, uh, I, I actually found the idea for my company, uh, talking to a, um, uh, a client who was, I was driving to the airport and he said, Hey, do you know, any companies that are in New York that are well. And so yep. I said, no, I don't. And he goes, well, I wish you, I wish I could find something. So that's how I, that's how that spurred the idea. Um, and before all that, I was doing all kinds of harebrained stuff, um, like, you know, the, the, the popular platitude is follow your passion. Sure. But that's what I was doing for the first five years um, after college and everything was failing. And because it turns out the market didn't give a crap about my passion. There was no needs for it. There was no, I was doing nothing right. other than selfishly attacking my own motives. And so that's when everything switched for me is when I realized, you know, I need to stop looking at me and my selfish motives. I need to start looking at the market. What does the market want? What, what do they demand? What is, what is the value I can provide that someone's going to open their wallet and say, hey, here's 10 bucks. I want what you have. Wow. Yeah. That, that's an a, a epiphany for lack of a better term. That, that's awesome. So actually seeing, taking a step away from your selfish self and then seeing what other people can use to level up. That's beautiful. So the millionaire fast lane, and I'm there every day, pretty much just kind of browsing and looking and picking up steps. Like it's free squad. Okay. That people out there listening, get there after this interview, it'll be in the show notes. What was the preface behind that fasting? Is it still the same thing that you you're giving, give it, given till you hurt so good? Yeah. The millionaire fasting actually sells better today than I released it over 10 years ago. Wow. And that's because everything in there is transcendent. Everything mm -hmm. in there survives time. It's very sure. evergreen. Um, human behavior, uh, you know, hasn't changed in the last 10 years. A lot has changed in the marketplace, obviously, right. Right. Uh, with apps and whatnot. But human behavior has not changed. Never. So the, the million right. fast lane is based on principles that will outlast time, which is why it still is one of the most recommended kind of underground books Love it. that likely you never heard of, but you go look at it and it's sold over a million copies. Right. And that's because the principles in their work, and I get emails practically every week from people who have changed their lives and said, oh my God, <laughs> I, I can't believe it. I made you know $5,000 in one day, which was more I made the entire month at my job. Sure. And it's because they're applying these principles um, that, that stand the test of time. Right. You, I, I misspoke. I meant the Fastlane Forum. It's free. What about it? it it's free. You know, sure, for absolutely. people to join. What made you, what was the motivation to have you set up something that's so freaking awesome that, that's absolutely free? Like you're, I know that there's probably other ways you're modernizing it, but what, what click to say, I'm going to start this form? Because I well, want people yeah, to yeah, go yeah. there, man. Um, <laughs> well, that, that again, that was based on a need uh, we just discussed. I used sure. to hang out at, at another forum. 
um, that was pretty well trafficked. And that forum just was overloaded with spammers, people selling crap, sure. uh, MLM opportunities, join my network, double downline bonus bullshit like that. <laughs> right. um, and right. it was just, it, there was nothing of redeeming value there except these low rent money chasing businesses, not real right. genuine enterprises, small business, large or whatever. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to deal with this anymore. I'm going to start my own forum. So I had a pretty big following at that forum. And once they discovered that I was creating my own forum, they actually followed me to my forum, which uh, spurheaded the growth of that. Because I'll tell you right now, starting a forum is the hardest thing I've ever done. It was harder mm. than my starting yeah. uh, my other business. It is just interior because it's a two-sided marketplace and you basically need, you know, two groups and someone shows up and there's no one there. You're not going to get anyone to gauge. So um, again, that was based on a fundamental need in the marketplace. He had a forum over here that was just unmoderated, selling crap. So I said, hey, I'm going to solve that and I'm going to do something better. And, uh, you know, and then fast forward today, it's still it's still active as ever. I love it. And so you're able to, you know, go into the forum spot. You can kind of ask questions and then get answers, uh, pick people's brains in a sense. So MJ, like... Is there any good question that you wish people would ask in the forum, but never do? Um, no, because they usually ask it. I mean, okay, there's, fair like enough. you said, there's, there's close to a million posts on there. Um, what happens is they always post the same question that has been answered multiple times. And, and a lot of times it's been covered in my book. Sure. Like, uh, you know, oh, I'm going to follow my passion. Well, great. You're, you're going to be you're going to be stuck with a million other people who are also doing the same thing. And probably the market need probably isn't very strong. Right. Um, or uh, they want to, uh, you know, they're posting low rents. Oh, Hey, I want to do some drop shipping and affiliate marketing. And I'm like, mm -hmm. this is, you read my book and that's what you got from it. Right. Right. Uh, that is, that is not, my book says nothing about trading currencies. My book says nothing about crypto. My book says nothing about uh, day trading uh, stocks. It, it right. says nothing about this stuff. And then they come there and they post this stuff and it's mm -hmm. clear that they either didn't comprehend the book or they didn't read the book. Sure. Um, because that is not, those are, that's arbitrage type of stuff. Absolutely. I talk about building fundamental business businesses that not only change other people's lives, but it will change your life and in short order. Absolutely, you do. So have you seen the movie Back to the Future? Yeah, very old, yes. Sure, absolutely. It's almost 40 years old. So let's get in that DeLorean with Marty McFly. Let's go back to the double deuce MJ DeMarco, the 22-year-old. What kind of knowledge nuggets are you dropping on the 22-year-old MJ to maybe help him level up, last through, or shorten that learning curve just a little bit. Uh, well, that's why I wrote the book is because I, I it was everything I wish somebody would have pounded into my head when mm -hmm. I was 22 years old. Um, and, and the first thing, obviously, was I said after college, I, I failed for a good five I don't know, four or five years maybe after college because I was following my passion and right. and and then nobody it sounded great yeah I want to do that I, you know and then I didn't realize I wasn't looking at the market for for basically anything that they wanted I was looking for what I wanted and that was the evolution of the sense framework uh, which is the basically the cornerstone of my philosophy control entry need time scale that's essentially what I wished somebody when I was 22 years old said, hey, this is the framework to follow. If you want, you know, if you want that Lamborghini at 29 years old, instead of never having it, if you want that big house, if you want this, you want this, this is the framework you need to start in, you need to follow in business if you're going to start a company. And that's control, entry, need, and scale. Or did I miss one? I uh, need, uh, need, need, time, and scale. Got it. Yeah. I remember seeing that. That's, I, that's important. Right. Go ahead. I'm yeah. sorry. As I like to say, if it makes sense, it makes sense. <laughs> I love it. Love it. Hope you're taking notes, squad, because it's like, again, I've read the books, but it, again, to actually hear it come out of the author's, author's uh, mouth is, is fantastic. So, MJ, how important then is to the companies that are growing to legitly grow? Because I didn't see any scale or any growth until I really started building an email list. And I don't spam them. Like I built, I was one of those people with affiliate marketing where I did click, 
Bank and all these other digital products. And it mm-hmm. got me started. Okay, mm-hmm. it got me to learn how to write a blog and, uh, and write entries and whatnot. And I built it up now to 150,000 plus subscribers. I've got, I'm looking at the Atlantic Ocean here and I have a whole room over here full of swag for that people send me for product demonstrations and to re, you know, review it and then send it out to my list at really good prices. But how important growing a company, obviously you probably have a huge list. I mean, I, I, texting list, email list, how important it is for a company to grow a list? Oh, it's absolutely critical. And, and, and the word list can be used interchangeably. Basically, uh, and then that falls into the C of my sense framework, which is control. Uh, a lot of people focus their efforts, you know, hey, I'm going to build this huge YouTube channel. And they have, you know, a half a million subscribers. Well, that's excellent. You know, congratulations. But they don't own their list. Right. They're, they're building on leased land. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a great channel. Right. But eventually you have to port that channel into your own asset that you can monetize. Love that it. is your own list. Yes. That is your own. Like for me, I, I spend all my, I spend very little time on social media because it's leased land. I'm not there to build Facebook's platform. And a good example is you want, you want a story? Here's one. I remember working my butt off trying to get my Facebook group you know, to this huge number, I got up to 155,000 people. And you know what, Mark Zuckerberg, he shows my posts to 300 people, 300 people. The control's not there, right? 155,000 people. He's going to show my post to 300 people. Right. That is why you have to control your own assets. Now you can use Facebook to, as a channel to port those people, those customers, potential customers into your own list, into your own platform. That's why Thank I spend you. all my time on the fast lane form because I own it. That's yes. my asset. It's not Zuckerberg, right. it's not right. Google's, it's not Instagram's. Right. So I love, yes. MJ, you are freaking awesome. Thank you for validating my thoughts on what I put out to my spot. I say the exact same thing. I actually leverage these YouTubers or Instagrammers that have followers because they're a lot of them are making zero money or very little and i actually build my list off of theirs where i ask sure. them hey here's a hundred bucks you think you could run this and it lands on a splash page or added to my list and i haven't gotten shut down my uh complaints are next to nil because the content that i put out to my list mm-hmm. is solid you know but you sure. like you said i control it because Correct. you know they could shut down youtube you could get bought by freaking somewhere in China or whatnot. And then they yeah. just totally mm-hmm. go, thank you, thank you, thank you. So MJ, how do you want your dash remember that little line in between your incarnation date and your expiration date, your life date and your death date on your tombstone? Hopefully it's way down the road, but how do you want your dash remember, brother? Well, first of all, I want to live my life with no regrets. And um, and for me, it's it's somewhat scary because I, I think to myself, I pinch myself every morning when I wake up, I can't believe this is the life I created. In fact, I just told my wife the other day, as I was looking around my house, I have this huge house, beautiful house, basketball court, indoor gym, wow. home theater. I mean, it. it's literally a hotel that I don't need to leave. Mm. And, I, and it was weird because I got out of the shower yesterday and I looked around and I said, I can't believe that this is a product of my own creativity, of sure. my own ingenuity. I didn't, I didn't get it on the ground floor of some company, a vice president of operations. I make a big four, you know, make bill. This is all because something I took from nothing to something. So for me, that dash is being able to leave something that's going to outlast me. Um, you know, when I'm gone, uh, the millionaire fast lane uh, will continue on. My other books will continue on. Um, hopefully I will have, uh, a uh, some non uh, some fiction books stories. Hopefully, those will be out there living on. Yeah, you need to so, write a business parable, bro. I'm telling you, you would correct. You, you would rock that. I, I'm doing it now. Okay. Oh, you did the great rat. The great rat race escape is a business parable. Right, right. But uh, there's something like a, a condensed one. Like I can just see you just blasting out there because I'm writing one now with the help of a, a couple of parable authors like Bob Berg and and stuff like that and getting it done. Um, no, it's, you're right. A hundred percent. Yeah. You're right. It is. So what do people misunderstand the most about NJ? About me? Yes. About you. I have no idea because I don't pay attention. Okay. 
You know, it's I, funny. I, you know, but, it's funny. I, I, um, I don't look at my bad reviews on, on Amazon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, I don't pay attention to trolls. I don't read the comments. Mostly. I, I try to avoid all that stuff. Right. Because it's, it's just a reflection of someone else's either ignorance mm-hmm. or their own self-worth or, or whatnot. Um, I used to do that to improve my writing, which is, mm-hmm. which is what you want to do at some point um, is to read, is to see what people are saying that could fundamentally improve what you are doing. Um, like I remember um, early on, some of my, critics said I was just too verbose, you know, mm-hmm. and, and part of that for me is because uh, just saying it once is not enough. You need it drilled into your sure. head because people don't understand that they, they want to, they want to frame something in their own worldview and their worldview is inaccurate. So therefore the results they get are also inaccurate. Um, so, but for the most part, I don't pay attention to, um, because I'm living my best life and sure. it doesn't matter what Joe Blow in Arkansas says on me and some <laughs> YouTube comment who's right. living in his parents' basement uh, who disagrees with me. I don't care. His opinion changes nothing, nothing. about the dream I'm right. living. And a lot of people get butt hurt because like you said, their self-worth, they're so like they have the green eyed monster, like they're envious of shit of yeah. what you've accomplished and their self-worth is, is not there. So they at lack lash out. And I, I make two res, new year's resolutions a year. One, make someone smile every day, which mm-hmm. I'm good. Cause I'm a freaking goof. And two is that unless I've hurt you, disrespected you or anything like mm-hmm. that, I give zero shits about what you think about. Period. Yeah, and my favorite is, Oh, you got lucky. Right. I yeah, say, right. Well, okay. <laughs> okay. Well here, if you think I got lucky, why don't you start your own forum? Yeah. Um, and let's see how that goes. And how usually, grow, right. um, they <laughs> discover after a week they're talking to right. themselves and no one's there um, that they can't do it. Sure. Or, or how about this? How about you write a book and spend nothing on advertising and sell a million copies? Let, let's see you get lucky right. there, too. I mean, so it's just so ridiculous. Yeah. Um, people don't that want you to just you learn and you hate you. If you fear what other people are going to say, you'll never be successful. Right. right. Because you will always you can donate food to the hungry, you can cure cancer, and you'll still have some idiot out there who's going to criticize you. Oh, hate, he's, right? he, you know, he, uh, he's this, he's that, he's, you know, whatever. Yeah, no, I, I feel you. So what, if anything, keeps MJ up at night? Um, I sleep pretty well. <laughs> Me too. I'm, just, I'm getting there. I, I was not that great, but... It, I, I would start thinking about the next day way too much. And I, I see that you don't probably think like that. It's not that you don't care that you've accomplished what you've wanted to during the day and you sleep no, I'm, well. I'm very, I've, uh, I've gotten very spiritually oriented, not religious, yeah. um, not really. about, about living, living in the now mm. and, and recognizing that the past is a conscious mental construct. The future right. is a mental construct. Um, so I sleep very well, um, very gratuitous. Uh, I have gratitude. I, re- I mean, every day I wake up and I, I just, I pinch myself. So there's not a lot that's keeping me up at night. Sure. Um, that's about it being acceptance. Right. You know, I don't like the state of the country, the way things are going. I don't like, Absolutely. I don't like how COVID was handled. I don't like, I mean, there's a tons of things I don't like. But that's life. Right. You have to learn to accept what is. Right. And uh, there's actually I have a family member who who's absolutely is depressed. Mm-hmm. And it's because he is trying to control everything in his life that cannot be controlled. Right. You know, someone someone commented negatively on the Instagram post. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to live your life because everything is not going to way to the way you want it to, you're going to be right. miserable for your entire life. You have to True. learn to let things pass through you. The, the things that you cannot control. It's so true. Like so many people have a foot in the past, a foot in the present, and they piss on the or a foot in the past, foot in the future, and piss on the present. You know, and they think that what you know happened to them is happening to them, and they just I get it. And that and what you're doing with your books is if they're willing and open, they're they can change that mentality. And thank Absolutely. you so much for doing that, bro. So. If you if we take out anything electronic, any cell phones, computer, laptop, tablets, you take out any of that and take out family out of this question. What are three things that MJ can't live without? Freedom. Okay. 
absolutely freedom. Um, and, and that's um, the ability to, I was just thinking, <laughs> last time I got up to an alarm clock was probably three years ago. Um, and, and, and that's because I was holding a conference and I was speaking at like eight in the morning. So I had to, mm. I had to get up, <laughs> right. um, uh, the ability to make a difference, um, in the, in the, in the lives of other people, whether that's one person, a dozen or hundreds or thousands or whatever. Um, it, I can't tell you how gratifying it is to hear, hear somebody from Eastern Europe or India right. um, or Korea that sure. my book has changed their life. Um, so having able, um, to make a difference and that's actually, they've done studies on these things that right. having autonomy in your life, which to me translates to freedom and having a purposeful, um, existence are the two fundamental markers for happiness. Yes. Um, and that's why I look at my life and say, well, that's why you're happy because you're free to do whatever you want. Right. You're free to contribute to the lives of others. And like sure. I always say is these people want to change the world, but they haven't learned how to change themselves. Yes. All right. Change <laughs> yourself first, mm -hmm. you know, and become the person you need to become in order to change the world. Uh, I, I heard a, a statement the other day and I didn't, I did not originate this. I don't know who said it. So pardon me for not crediting it, but you don't build the business. The business builds you. Yes. Um, because the person you have to become to create this enterprise, whether it's a small enterprise with a few employees or this huge enterprise with hundreds of employees, that's going to change you fundamentally. Yes. And then you can change the world. So back to your question, I've got off track here with freedom, fine. A purpose. And did you ask for three? Yeah, you said freedom, make a difference in lives of others and purposeful existence. That's and perfect, health. Man. Oh, you said you said yeah, I couldn't say health. Yeah. So it's there also. Family. We're taking away a lot. Of I know, right? I know. Because <laughs> they're givens. You know, people will sometimes answer that. Well, oxygen, gravity. Yeah, no shit. Okay. Hey, squad, we're going to come back and take my friend, MJ DeMarco, through our leveling up lightning round just as soon as we get back from thanking our sponsors and affiliates. Time to shine today, Podcast Varsity Squad. We are back with my author, and I consider him a good friend. Somebody that I really, almost like a mentor, but nobody that I really confer with. I can just go right back to his books, MJ DeMarco. And MJ, we have a leveling up lightning round. You and I could probably share a couple of brain grenades or a cup of coffee and talk about each one of these questions for an hour each. But you have five seconds with zero explanations. You ready? Five seconds? Five seconds, man. Zero explanation. All of them can be answered like that. I'll try my Let's best. Do it. Let's do it. You got no, it. <laughs> you got it. Let's level up. MJ, what's the best leveling up advice you've ever received? Um, focus on the market instead of focusing on yourself. Beautiful. Share one of your personal habits that contributes to your success. Um, never, never seeking out, um, seeking out information and uh, accepting that you don't, you don't know everything. Beautiful. Beautiful. If other than your books, what books do you like to uh, dig into? If you saw me and said, all right, Fergie's read all my books. He's in his doldrums. What book might you hand me? Uh, well, I don't read a lot of business books because uh, I just think they're full of crap, but one sure. of them I recently read that I thought was particularly interesting was die with zero by bill Perkins, who, Never who, um, essentially makes the case that at some point you want to start spending your money instead of saving it. So Beautiful. you can derive life experiences. And I don't agree with everything in the book, but it was right. really, he did a good job of explaining that there's a threshold there that you need. Awesome. to consider. I'll throw that in the show notes. If you could stay, don't lie to me on this one, MJ. If you could stay one age physically for the rest of your life, keep everything you've garnered, the wisdom you've garnered, and continue to gain knowledge physically, what age would you stay for the rest of your life? 33. Thank you. I always say 20 to 32. So thank you for putting a three on the front of that. Any nicknames growing up? I'm sorry, what? Nicknames growing up? <laughs> um, cow. Cow. Love it. Cow and Cockness. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Chess or checkers? Uh, chess. All right. Favorite charity and organization like to give your time or money to? Um, uh, PETA. PETA. Beautiful. Thank you for saying that. Last question. You can elaborate on this one a little bit, but what is the best decade of music? 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s? 
seventies. Seventies. All right, I'm I'm right there with you. Seventies and eighties. I graduated in 1990, so it was like I kind of had that seventies with my mom and dad, and then the eighties is so revolutionary. I love it. I love it. So MJ, let's get into a little bit more about how people can use the Fastlane forum to help them level up, and also the books that you have out. And squad, we're going to do a giveaway on each one of the three books. And I just want you to put, uh, let's say fast lane in any of the comments, whether it's Pinterest, Instagram, uh, it, it actually fast lane and then a name of a, one of his books, whether it's unscripted, the great rat race escape and the first one, the millionaire fast lane, just say, yeah. So we're gonna, anybody that puts those in the comments on any of the social, I will purchase a book and MJ has agreed to Hancock it, sign it, and I'll pay for the postage to get it out to him. So let, let's talk a little bit about let, let, your favorite book of the three. Which one is it? Uh, here's an interesting thing is uh, I've changed so much over the time that when I read The Millionaire Fastlane, because I wrote it 14 years ago, mm. I didn't recognize the person who wrote it, <laughs> which was me. Uh, because I've changed. I mean, the concepts are all, the concepts still stand the test of time, but um, so every new book I write is my favorite um, simply because it's more of a reflection of who I've become. Um, but if you ask the general public, usually they like the first one uh, because it's the rawest. And mm -hmm. um, it's also when I was, you know, also younger and a little bit more braggadocio. Sure. Um, first of all, for me, I, 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 <laughs> I didn't like, I didn't like, <laughs> I just didn't like the way um, I came across uh, 14, 15 years ago. That's because none of us do, dude. I feel you. I was printing <laughs> money from 03 to 07. And then when the market dropped in real estate, I lost it. You know, literally, oh. I mean, my story is, you know, I lived homeless. I, I was a real estate broker and I printed oh. money, right? Sure. And a, a client said, hey, we're moving to Florida, Get, getting out of Michigan because I'm from Detroit, right? I'm mm -hmm. getting out of Detroit. We're moving to Florida and they wanted me to short sale their house and squad short sales just own more than what the house is worth. And so they left and I literally turned the power on using another friend's name in the house. I squatted there. And then oh, that's wow. when I rebuilt everything. I started building time to shine today. And that was Oh nine. Um, so it, it, it's crazy. And I didn't have your book and I don't know how I didn't, it would have helped out a lot because I needed that. I was handed a, another book called The Traveler's Gift by Andy Andrews. Mm -hmm. Great book. Um, business parable. Dude goes, loses his job. Daughter's dying. He wants to kill himself. So he runs into a tree and he wakes up in 1942 with Give Him Hell, Harry Truman, about ready to drop the bomb. And it was all about making uh, a responsibility. Then he meets like uh, King Solomon for wisdom and Frank for being happy. It's an awesome book that really started to change things and stuff. So oh, wow, it's a great book. It's a fun business parable. If you ever want to pick it up, it's called the traveler's gift. A lot of fun. But anyways, I just bogarted your time here. I, I forgot what we were talking about. Uh, this is my oh. favorite of the three books, yeah, which is sorry. It's usually, it's usually the last one I've written. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. And it's funny. I read, uh, I read unscripted first, Right. Oh, and I, I did. And then uh, Millionaire Fast Lane. And I, I'm not going to lie. I'm only about three quarters of the way through the, the rat race. I call it the rat race. The great rat race escape. So that they've they're they're life changing squad. They're, it's a, they're they're books that like, again, he's gruff. So just get ready about it. Don't get butt hurt by it, because it's a guy who we, me and him kind of walked a similar path with kind of the lower middle income and not really having that identity set up in our minds. That it's that that's that's almost okay to be rich or that's okay to be wealthy, because uh, a lot of people are set and you're going to have a lot of haters. Which uh, MJ, if you go through the uh, his his reviews, you'll have a lot of those, and and that's just the crab mentality where you know you're trying to get out of that rat race and people are trying to pull you back in to, to their comfort zone. So yeah, that's just. Uh, MJ, this is awesome, dude. So, thank you. I know I'm rambling. It's just I've been waiting on this one. Man. I'm having fun, man. Keep so, going. <laughs> yeah, it's just been fun. It's been fun. It's, could you do me a favor and leave us with one last knowledge nugget you want us to take with us, internalize, and take action? on? Uh, no one cares about your personal experience. They only care about what you can do for them. Yes. Um, so if, if you offer something that someone wants uh, because they find it cheaper, more convenient, um, more problem solving, whatever, they will give you money. 
Uh, sure. And if your story identifies, if you have a story, this is where that violates that is if you have a story that people can identify with, you can also sell more. Oh. And that's um, so that's the power of story. Um, so if you if you want to have all these selfish narratives, make sure that story ties into your customer where they can identify with that story. Um, that. Because all things held equal, the person with the better story or the company with the better story. We started this company you know, to save the whales, we started this company to do X, Y, or Z, right. then you will have an advantage over the company who's just out there to make money. Love it. Love that. And, and squad, we literally, I, I kept my guy here, MJ, uh, too long here. He agreed to 30 minutes. He gave us 40. And I just am so, so appreciative of, of MJ. We got a free masterclass, guys. I mean, this is a guy that had a passion to write, and he wanted to show an alternative way to generate wealth live with purpose and meaning okay he wants you to stop looking at your selfish motives and see what the market needs and fulfill it okay don't forget about the control entry need time and scale okay make and he also says make sense make sense so that's make s-e-n-s-e makes c-e-n-t-s okay remember that social media is least land so it goes back to the first uh, it was his control. You don't control your social media. So start building a list. Start something that you can control and put out that great content, like MJ said, that saves lives. He's going to be, some, be somebody that lives with no regrets. He's going to, th this is the thing about MJ right now. And he, I don't know if you realize this, but he's planting trees that he's never going to sit in the shade of. Okay, mm -hmm. squad, mm -hmm. think about it. He's planting trees he's never going to sit in the shade of. Because what he's doing is evergreen. And I've even I teach that to my clients. Evergreen is something that's going to be around a long time, if not forever. Okay. He's basically somebody that doesn't want you to, you know, live with a foot in the present, a foot, I'm sorry, foot in the past, foot in the future, and piss on the present. He wants you to live now and to be happy and just level up. He believes in, you know, freedom, making a difference in the lives of others and living a purposeful existence, you know? And he, he left it with what I call with him. What's in it for me, okay? You, people don't care what you can do unless it really serves them. Uh, they, unless they're family and, and whatnot, then they might care in a totally different way, but they are looking for something, provide it for them, make sure it's of great value and it makes sense for them. So don't sell the steak, sell the sizzle, make it work. And that's what my guy MJ does. He levels up his health, he levels up his wealth. He's humble yet hungry. And he's learned his varsity letter here at a Time to Shine Today podcast, Varsity Spot. Thanks so much, MJ, for coming on. I love your guts, brother. And I just can't say enough on how blessed I am for this interview, bro. Thanks for having me, man. I really appreciate it. Had a, had a blast. Awesome. Chat soon.